Hi there, stampers and crafters. My name is Tammy White from stampwithtammy.com. And today launches my Stampin' Demonstrator Group's Halloween blog hop. And on this video, I'm gonna share with you my blog hop project, which I absolutely love. <laughs> and I'm gonna show you how to make it. It's a lot easier than you would think. And stay tuned to the end of this video where I'm going to announce our September blog hop contest giveaway. It's awesome and you're not gonna wanna miss it. And after, you're gonna wanna pop on over to my blog simply by clicking in the link in the YouTube description below and checking out all of the other Halloween projects that my group is sharing today. The links will all be right on my blog. It's super easy and super fun. There are some amazing projects in it from some very talented gals in my group. And who knows, maybe you'll even win something. All right, let's get started. And here is that card up close. It is just so cool. Absolutely love this. Gonna show you some techniques. One, using the new sponge brayer that Stampin' Up! is carrying, which I think you may even find easier than the old brayer that we used to have. And I'm gonna sprinkle in a couple other cool tips. To create this card, I'm using the new Spooky Fun Bundle. It's the stamp set and the Halloween Scenes Edgelets from Stampin' Up. Super, super cool set. And when you purchase them together in my online store, you save 10%, so that's another bonus. And you can purchase all of the supplies that I'm using today on this card in my online store simply by going to this URL or clicking in the link in the YouTube description below. And I'll have a free PDF file for you as well that has all of the dimensions and details on this card. And that is just one more way I like to say thanks for watching. I've got a panel of Whisper White cardstock here. Again, dimensions are on my blog. I'm gonna take some scrap paper underneath. The colors I'm using are Stampin' Up's Crushed Curry, Pumpkin Pie, two really good Halloween colors there, Cherry Cobbler, and Elegant Eggplant. I'm using the, the new Sponge Dauber, and this actually, um, it comes in a pack it actually comes in a little box here when you purchase it in my online store. You actually get two handles and you'll get five of these roller brayers. So you can have sponges for every color, but you can also rinse these out and reuse them. So however you choose to do that. Now, I'm really used to the um, rubber brayer, which I used to have a little different technique when I did this. This, I just kind of rolled a little bit in the crushed curry and I'm starting with crushed curry over the entire card. Just kept picking up a little ink as I went. It's a really fun, easy way of adding color to the card. Now here's something that I found so much easier than the old rubber brayer that Stampin' Up! used to carry is that I find I didn't get as many lines in the project when I was done. And the more layers of color you put on here, the more even the color will get. You can leave it like this so it has a cool effect to it where it's got dimension, or you can go over it with a little bit more color and it evens out the color so it's more solid. All depends on the look you're going for. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little masking because it's Halloween and we should be wearing masks on Halloween, right? This is the two inch circle punch from Stampin' Up! and a post-it note. So I'm gonna punch a circle out of the post-it note. Make sure you get a little sticky on there because you're gonna need that to stick to the project. That's going to become our moon. Now for the rest of this, it does not matter if you start at the bottom and work your way up or at the top or, and work your way down but I'm gonna start at the top with the elegant eggplant so I'm just gonna do a little roll in the eggplant almost to the bottom of the moon with that color I'm gonna take it to the moon and back again I made it especially dark at the top blended a little bit more coming down so it looks sort of like that now it's totally up to you how dark you want this one of my prototypes here, I didn't quite put as much purple on it, so it's a little bit more red. This one's a little bit more purple. So you can put as much or as little of each color as you like here to blend it to your taste. So now I've got a cherry cobbler sponge. I'm gonna roll that in the ink, and I'm gonna start a little ways down here on the egg, eggplant, because it creates a really cool color with the eggplant and the um, cherry cobbler mixed together. Now without re-inking, I'm gonna blend it a little bit by just rolling down the bottom edge here. 
And then I'm going to take a, t a pumpkin pie sponge and roll out the rest. Before I take that little moon mask off, I want to show you something. I'm going to show you up close here. I'm going to spritz the panel with water and it's going to create, and if you look up close, do you see how my sample healer almost looks like it has um, noise, like when you take a photograph at night, like a grainy look to it, which I thought was super cool for this. This is completely optional, this part. It's what the original looks like and this is kind of the, the grainy noise look. I got that grainy effect by taking a Stampin' Spritzer and this just has water in it and spritzed the top of the cardstock after it was brayered. And then that just takes a minute to dry. And while it's drying, we'll go ahead and do our Big Shot work. So I've got the Big Shot die cut machine and the platform that comes with it, the thin die adapter that also comes with it and the precision base plate, which I like when I'm using these edgelets instead of using two cutting pads everything just pops right out. I'm going to be cutting the tree dye from the Halloween Scenes edgelets twice. Once out of black and once out of white. Now the black I'm going to do maybe an inch or a hair less up on the cardstock. One cutting pad on top and crank it through. And the same thing with the white. And then when it comes off I'm going to take my little dye brush and the foam mat that comes with it and I'm just going to run over it and that just pops it right out of the die and this is just a little half mount case from stampin up that they actually sell these for the stamp sets and i put the die brush in here because it collects all of these tiny little scraps it makes it nice and neat okay so we're going to do that again in white and then you're going to just attach these two panels together so there's just a tiny little white shadow that just makes this black tree pop off the page. And actually, we're gonna do it this way. My bad. My bad, I'm showing you backwards. We want it to go this way on the card. It's a right-handed tree. <laughs> okay, so you can use your liquid glue. You can use your, um, you can use your fine tip glue pen for this. I'm gonna use snail, cause you know me. I love it. I'm addicted to it. Use it on everything, and I'll show you how to poke it out so you don't see in between the intricate pieces. So I'm just going to put it on the back of the black tree outline, and then I'll just take the paper piercer and poke out any pieces that show, and then just line that up over the white. And my white happened to be a little bit longer, so I'm just going to trim off those little hanging edges. Isn't that super cool? Love it! And while we were playing on the big shot, here's what happened after our cardstock dried. Now this one, I wet down a little bit more than my original. So we have more texture to the background. It's such a, such a cool look. Gonna take our basic black ink pad and do some stamping. So I'm gonna place the tree down first, just using some snail adhesive. Look at how much that just pops up. It's such a wow. And that just goes down the bottom. And then I'm gonna take a black ink pad for our witch and stamp her in the kind of upper part of the moon. I'll bring in some scrap paper so we can stamp some of these bats. I have them kind of double mounted here. There was two bats and I used them both. Just stamped a couple of each. Just in the upper corner. And I'm stamping the words trick or treat on some old olive. You know what, I'm trimming them, I'm, I'm punching out this strip of scrap paper because it's a double punch. I want this one on the bottom, so. Gotta come at it from underneath. And that gives us our word panel. And lastly, we just have some assembly. So I'm taking my snail adhesive to attach our image panel to a black frame. And again, all of these measurements are on my stampwithtammy.com blog. And the snail also attaches this old olive panel to the card base. Then I'm going to take some Stampin' Dimensionals for the back of the image panel to attach it to the card base. And a couple Stampin' Dimensionals on the back of our words. And put that right in the center. And for our finishing touch, I'm taking some of the Halloween night enamel dots. These are super fun. They're in the holiday catalog. 
I'll do orange this time. We did purple on the original. Just to shake it up a little bit. And our super cool card is complete. And I love this background. How stinking cool is that? And so easy to do too. All right, let's hear about that contest and how you can enter for free. Did you love it as much as I did? It was such a cool card and so much fun to make. Now about that contest. So you can enter to win the Stampin' Up! Stitched with Cheer Paper Crafting Kit simply by popping on over to my blog and leaving a comment on this blog post with the hashtag Stamp It Contest. And you can enter multiple times by leaving comments on all of the blogs in the hop. You can leave as many comments as you like. However, only one comment per person per blog will be entered. And don't worry if you have missed the deadline for this contest, simply pop on over to the specials page on my blog and you can check out all of my current giveaways. All right, time to pop on over and check out the rest of that blog hop. Thanks for joining me today.